catch up is that uh, speaking from the fact that we really we're not going to have time. We don't want time really to go into any long analysis or uh, just to kind of debate two different positions of the even on the fact part. I hope that we're able to spark the debate uh, by throwing out uh, some ideas. And if I was to say anything distinctive in this whole question of policing and justice and truth and lies and the rest of it, first thing I'd like to say, like to say is that this is an Irish thing. Certainly not a nor northern Irish thing. We have a tendency, and that this is true everywhere, and that's a political experience going back many years, probably through every area of conflict. People tend to judge everything, understandably, in terms of what's going on in our own little patch of areas. And not to see it in a wider context. You see, but take policing and justice, for example. Why do you say the PSNI is unacceptable uh, in the nationalist areas? And some say, well, that's going to continue forever. And other people say that the time to recognize the police is that they are acceptable or that they'll soon become acceptable. They have an argument about that. You can go on all night, and some of us have had uh, arguments that go on all night, go on all night about that. But so we tend to forget some of the what we're talking about is not unique at all. We go, where are police acceptable and where are they not acceptable? A couple of areas that I know across the water. One's Easter House in Glasgow. I don't know how many people go to Glasgow. The police are unacceptable in Easter House in Glasgow. They can't go in, uh, in the winter league. You don't see them racing around on bicycles or chasing after lost dogs or helping old ladies. They have to go in heavy handed and mob handed. They're unacceptable. Why? Because it's a disadvantaged area. Well, people are living in disadvantaged areas and disadvantaged situations anywhere in the world when they feel rightly that they're not getting a fair deal from society and the state that they live within, they are likely to be, at the very least, antagonistic towards and not outright hostile towards, and on one occasion, violent towards the representatives of the state. Their relationship with the cops will be one of skepticism and hostility, depending on what's happened and happening from time to time. Cops that the Liverpool is exactly the same. I know I've been in the cops that the partner himself, they've been in the cops the discovery that the pubs were open to three o'clock in the morning. Wide open. Now, this is wonderful. What is it? A festival or something? No. It's not because the cops don't dare come in here. No go area for the cops. The point that I'm making simply is that we've got to ask ourselves, what in the wider context does this mean? And I'm not even going to go into Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro or some third world cities where the cops have a relationship of war with local people in disadvantaged areas and in shanty towns and in all the rest of it. The documentary about Bombay or Mumbai, as it's called these days, a couple of nights ago, on television, going in with the cops into working class areas. The cops were going in in armored cars with heavy machine guns, the type of thing we used to see on the street outside. So when we talk about justice and policing and truth and lies and the rest of it, we are not talking about something which is confined to our little bit of air. You see, the conclusion I draw from this, this is the important part, the conclusion I draw from this is that you can't solve these problems simply by altering the political structure here in the North of Ireland. If you could solve them here in the North of Ireland, you had, so they wouldn't exist anywhere else if it was just a matter of the badly structured to have political system which we have here in the six counties of the North East, sort of all uh, this middle area. We have to look outside and we see what we have, what we have to do. And I'll throw one other idea into the mix of that, and I think they fit together, so we don't have time to win it. But I hope we'll go into some of this when the thing goes to the floor. You yeah, asked where the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the greatest hostility between the cops and people on this island. I venture to say that North Inner City Dublin is the equal of anywhere in the six counties for hostility to the police. I've been down there recently campaigning, speaking with a couple of mates from the family of Terence Wheelock. You might have heard of Terence Wheelock. From the inner city there, the young man who was arrested and taken into the Stewart Street Guard Station a couple of years back and came out dead. The cop says he hanged himself in a suicide. Nobody in the area believes that. I spoke in a bit in the community centre at the, the, the Sean McGarrett Street a few weeks ago, meeting about this size, which went on for two and a half hours. Person after person after person got up after we presented the facts of my parents' wheel up and said, I went through the same thing, my brother went through the same thing, my uncle went through the same thing, over and over and over again. They hated the guards. You don't read that in the Irish Times or the Daily Mirror or the Sun, do you? In the Irish editions of these papers. You don't see it, I, I, I heard it. One, okay, one last picture of it. 
humanists, other places where you see alienation from the face. The organization that I'm part of, the SEA and the anti-war movement, twice in recent times we have been picketed about peace brutality in this city. One was the savage attack in Gary Barney in Foyle Street, where he died from the with his comrades and associates. The other was a savage attack in the young fellow in the fountain. And I had the great pleasure, and it was a pleasure, of walking up and down outside the courthouse when young Bergen appeared there with people from the fountain. One of them was an Ibrox bar, a little, a, 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 a little baseball cap bar. You might think that's pretty odd, but it struck me that this is the way it should be with working class people that are standing against the cops and into the future of this year. I'll tell you something else, I'm meeting people at the top of the town, that notorious club. I'm going to be making Bergen and Bergen stress. Every one of them was absolutely adamant that they were being discriminated against by the police because they're Protestants. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that strike most of the people here? It's utterly bizarre. But they had an explanation for it. They say, now since all the changes, the cops can get away with things here in the fountain that they'd never get away with in the dragon. He says, if they tried it in the dragon, then the curtain will be down on them like a ton of bricks. So but when they do it in the fountain, we have to move to stand up for us. And we give examples. He says, if we get any bother at night, the cops get out of the land rovers. He says, they'll chase us in the streets. He says, they'll think twice about doing that in the brand of that, wouldn't they? I said, well, you're right, Reverend, they might do it. You know, so when they think twice about it, he said, we're being discriminated against. But, but I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I have no idea how you would measure these things. I am saying it's a genuine perception. And all the point that I'm making is there's an awful lot more than these debates about policing, about justice, about truth and life. An awful lot more to it than just the question of whether nationalists in the North of Ireland should give their support to the police service and give their support to the system of justice. And I hope we can get on to some of that in the discussion.